Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Serena. In today's video, I have a very cheap and very easy Halloween craft for you. I'll be showing you guys how I made over this really cheap $3 plastic cauldron that I bought from Target into a spooky witch's cauldron. So if you guys are interested in how I achieved this look, then go ahead and keep watching. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Serena and I put out new videos every week on literally anything and everything. So I would absolutely love to have you as a subscriber. Make sure you click that subscribe button down below. And if you want notifications every time I upload something new, make sure you ding the bell as well. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna need to put this together. Now, the cauldron that I bought was from Target in their little dollar section, and I paid three bucks for mine. You might be able to find the exact same ones or like one without the little like cheesy stars on it at the dollar store. I have seen plastic cauldrons in various sizes at the dollar store. So whatever plastic cauldron you can find and however much you wanna pay for it, go for it. Next, you're going to need paper towels. So this is super random, but I chose paper towels to achieve this look. So you're just going to need like three or four regular size paper towels. You're also going to need your paint. These are really cheap acrylic paints. These I believe I got from Hobby Lobby. You can find some of these acrylic paints for under a dollar. This exact one is by the brand Folk Art. The color is maple syrup. And this is the Apple Barrel Outdoor Indoor Gloss acrylic paint and this one is just in black. So I mix the two of these together. You can use whatever colors that you want to get your desired effect. I just opted for the more traditional black with a hint of brown just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. You're also going to need your paint brushes. I chose for my base coat, my black paint, just these cheap little foam brushes. I got a large set on Amazon and they've lasted me for such a long time and I'm still using them like a year later. So if I can find the exact set that I bought on Amazon, I'll make sure that I link it in the video for you. And I also used a regular, really inexpensive paintbrush. I think I got this in a set at Hobby Lobby. Um, so if I can find something similar on Amazon, I'll just link it for you. This is what I used to paint the gold leafing on. And the paint that I used for the gold leafing effect or just like the gold shimmery effect is this Deco Art Elegant Finish metallic glaze and the color is in medieval gold this is so old I've had it for like a couple years and it's literally like hardened inside but I can still get some paint out of there so I'm gonna rock it till the wheels fall off so to speak you're also going to need a hot glue gun and some hot glue I got this I think from Hobby Lobby or Michaels a million years ago I think they might even sell glue guns in the dollar store or something so I don't know you can find them pretty cheap and the glue sticks aren't very much either so you'll need that to glue your spiders on and then you're gonna need your spiders as well this I still had a pack from last year. This was from Target. This is their little like hide and eek brand. I'm sure that they still have this exact same brand. There was 150 spiders in here. So I used this last year to make my little spider cloths. By the way, if you guys have not seen my tutorials from last year, I have a lot of Halloween decor tutorials. So be sure to check out my Halloween playlist. I'll make sure that I link the playlist at the very end of this video so you can check out all those videos. This is gonna be the only video I think this year that I'm focusing on Halloween decor. I think so because the rest of it's gonna be like cocktails and I'm gonna try to make some videos on Halloween costumes for you guys this year so stay tuned for that. Anyways I'm going off on a tangent. You're gonna need your little plastic spiders. I only used about 10 of these for my cauldron. I didn't want to go overboard. So that is what you're gonna need to put your spooky witch's cauldron together. Okay, so you're gonna start with your clean, dry plastic cauldron. This is the one I got from Target, three bucks. I will link to something similar because I can never find stuff that they sell in store with Target. They always suck with linking their stuff online. So I'll find a similar one and link it for you. This is really important, I totally forgot to mention it in my intro. You need Mod Podge, you need an adhesive, and Mod Podge is the best around. 
So just make sure you pick up Mod Podge. Any kind will do. I think I used like the matte one, but they have like glossy and luster and all that. So I watered down my Mod Podge and just kind of poured it into a dish. You can use it watered down or just as is. You're gonna slop it all over your cauldron in just like an even layer. And I used my sponge brush to dip in and just kind of pat the paper towel down. You can use your hands or you can use your little sponge brush. I liked to really crumple up and wrinkle the paper towel because I like to get that leathered, crinkled effect once it's dried. Just make sure that if you are going with the crinkly method and you're wrinkling up the paper towel, make sure that you pat it down so that there's no major exposed bubbles underneath that aren't sticking to the plastic. If that happens, then it might rip later on either when you're painting or just like wear and tear as the cauldron is like hanging out in your dining room or wherever you have it. So just keep that in mind or like if the kids are playing with it. So basically I just used that technique around the entire cauldron. It's kind of like paper mache, I guess. You just work in layers. I did dampen some of the paper towel just so that it would be more malleable and easier to spread over the cauldron, but you really don't need to. You can take unwatered down Mod Podge and slop it over your cauldron and take a perfectly dry paper towel and just set it down. And I didn't use any particular brand of paper towel. I think that this is just a generic thin paper towel. If you don't want to use paper towels, by all means, you can use tissue paper as well. You're just not going to get that like pebbled, hammered finish if you use tissue paper. You know, the d tissue paper I'm talking about is like stuffing presents and stuff, you can use tissue paper. That's really thin and it'll give you like a really thin effect rather than like the chunky hammered metal finish that the paper towel gives you. So I just slopped everything all around the cauldron and I started to rip pieces of the paper towel apart and went into sections. Um, and then ended up kind of mashing it down with my hands and um, when I got to the lip area, I was really careful to make sure that I pressed it down on the grooves of the cauldron and made sure that I pressed it down on the lip and around the little handle. I didn't bother putting paper towels on the handle just because I figured it would be really tedious and it's really unnecessary. You don't need to do that. The handle is just black. It's just going to hang out and be a like black handle. So I don't know. I didn't find it necessary to add anything to the handle um, just because I thought it would be too fussy to work with. So just make sure that when you are working around the rim that you're pressing it down as evenly as you possibly can. You'll also notice that with my sponge I have like a rolling motion that I do when I'm really trying to smooth it out and the sponge is like so saturated with water and the Mod Podge adhesive that it really like presses everything in and kind of glues it all together, so to speak. So you see the little rolling method there. But yeah, so I squished the under part, like the lip inside of the cauldron with my sponge because I wanted to make sure there was no overhanging pieces. That way it doesn't like rip, like I said, if your kids are playing with it or something like that. Or like if you have a little kid and they're, you know, wearing a witch costume or something and they're using it for their candy for whatever you're using it for, just make sure that the inner part of the lip is pressed down. That way it doesn't rip later on. You know, you don't want all your little hard work to go to waste. So you're going to let that dry and what you're going to end up with is a goopy, messy looking cauldron. Now it's time to paint. I let mine sit, I think, 12 to 24 hours. I just let it kind of hang out for a full day in the sun so that the paper towels like really baked on there. And then for paint, I just mix black and brown together. Um, I wanted to go pretty basic. 
Now for painting, you probably want to opt for these little sponge guys that I used because the sponge you can really like push into the grooves. Since you're using the paper towel, there's a lot of wrinkles and divots and crinkles. And because of that, you're going to want to make sure that you press the sponge with the color into the cauldron. That way it gets any of the little white speckles. So that's where the sponge comes in handy. I didn't water down my paint. I just had my paint as is. And I just painted over the entire thing. I let it dry. And then when it was dry, I just let it dry for like, you know, a couple hours in the sun. And then I picked it back up again and I examined it to make sure that there weren't any little missing spots that were like, you know, still white. And if there were a couple spots, I just went over and pressed more black paint into the white spots and let that dry for another couple of hours. So it, it doesn't take long to dry since acrylic paint is really quick drying and like I said if you just kind of like hang it in the sun it'll be good to go within like an hour or two. And just a side note if you really wanted an extra dimensional finish you could paint an entire layer of brown, then an entire layer of black, an entire layer of gray, and then go back over it with black. In the past when I've done some painting projects, I did do that and you end up with a really cool dimensional effect. But for me, what I was looking for was just kind of a plain black cauldron and then I chose to get my dimension out of layering the gold paint on, which you'll see in just a second. Now, as I said, the gold paint that I used was kind of dried up, which was totally fine because I was using it very sparingly. This is where your cheap paintbrush comes in. All I did was dab a little bit of my brush into the paint and then just kind of blot it off on the lid to the point where there was not a ton of paint on. And I just kind of roughly brushed it over the textured areas of the cauldron just to create that little bit of dimension, just to add a little bit of a metallic brushed gold look. And I just repeated that process all over the entire cauldron. There's no rhyme or reason here. You don't have to be perfect with it. I just really like the way that the gold picks up the extra texture in the flat black of the cauldron. So you're just going to dab, brush, and paint over the entire thing just like I said, to pick up on the texture of the cauldron with your brush. So what you're going to turn out with is a mottled black and gold finish. Now if you want to, you can absolutely leave it like this, but I wanted to tone down the gold a little bit. So you'll see here, I just pick up my same exact black sponge brush that I was using initially to cover the cauldron and I just go around and I dab over some of the areas of the gold that are a little strong just to tone them down a bit. Now, once those layers have dried completely, you can add your spiders. I chose to paint mine with the same gold paint that I used in an overlay, and I used only, I believe, approximately 10 spiders just because I did not want to overdo it. So I just took the same style of a cheap paintbrush and I really roughly and messily painted over my 10 little spiders just so that they have that metallic 
gold finish so that they really stand out on the black of the cauldron, but they still really go with the cauldron because they themselves are black and gold. So I totally forgot to hit record when I first started gluing my spiders down, but you get the idea here. As soon as they've completely dried, all you do is you take your hot glue gun and you just glue little dots onto the cauldron where you want your spiders and then you just stick them on. So I didn't put them in any particular order, I just kind of glued them in random spots on the little cauldron. Super easy, it takes two seconds. And your finished result is a spooky, aged, withered looking witch's cauldron. I like the way this turned out. It's not super duper realistic. It's not very authentic, but I just think it's really cute. And I like the elements of the gold spiders to kind of tone down the like scary, like not that the cauldron is gory, but you kind of know what I mean. Like I don't like stuff to be too scary. I like a little bit of spooky, but I don't like gore, gross, like warty, boy and all that stuff so I really like the way this turned out there's a tiny bit of glam with the gold and the spiders but it still looks kind of withered and old and the napkin underneath kind of gives it like a hammered metal finish which I think is so funny because it's literally just a napkin so and I really think that the gold paint overlaid across it really gives it that hammered metal finish as well. And the mixture and the layers of the black paint with the gold, I think really gives it a little bit more dimension than if you would have just painted it one flat color. Now I will also say, if you don't like my method or you're kind of like gearing towards my method and you're just wanting something more, I have seen two other tutorials or plastic cauldron makeovers that are really impressive. I have seen somebody using instant oatmeal so this person, if I can find the blog post, I'll link it in the description box as well. You guys, I always pack my description box with as much stuff and information as I possibly can. So I always link everything that I've used or something similar to what I use in the description box. So if you guys are ever, ever curious or, you know, if I'm vlogging and I talk about a recipe or something, usually I'll link the recipe or whatever in my description box. So again, I'm going off on a tangent, but I will link that blog post if I can find it. This girl or guy, I think it's a girl, she ground up instant oatmeal and mixed it with glue, like Elmer's glue and let it go into a paste. And then she dripped it on the cauldron and let it dry. I think she might've even mixed sand in there. So it created like a bubbled over effect. So if you were going for more of a like smooth overall cauldron and maybe you wanted to just paint it and then you wanted to do the like bubbly goop coming off the sides of the cauldron and then repaint over that, that would be a really good way. And then another way, if you're wanting to just go with more of the metal look, I know I've used it in the past. There is spray paint. I think it's by Krylon or something, but it is a hammered metal finish spray paint. There's also a texture, like a stone texture spray paint. So I'll link both of those spray paints down below in the description box as well if you're wanting to do something alternative. And that would be way faster than what I was doing here. I got the, the look that I wanted for mine, but if you guys are looking for other alternatives on how to like make over a cauldron, I'll definitely link those spray paints because literally you spray paint the cauldron, let it dry and you're good. But I've used the hammered finish spray paint before and it actually works okay. I mean, it's not going to give you like a, like the exact hammered paint finish of like real metal, but it kind of gets you similar effect and the texture is there. So there's a stone textured spray spray paint and the hammered metal one. So I'll link both of those below as well if you guys are looking for other alternatives 
to your cauldron. Another side note, the method that I use to weather and age this cauldron with the paper towel and the Mod Podge, that is applicable for the spell books and the potion bottles that I show you in the clip with the cauldron all staged together. So I use that exact same paper towel and Mod Podge method and paint with the spell books and with the potion bottles the exact same technique. You lay your paper towels down and you glue them and then you just paint over them. And as far as the spell books go, I just used hot glue to write the words and then I painted over that with some paint and then I did a little bit more detail work with a paintbrush and the gold paint. So it's literally the exact same technique. And if you guys are really loving crafts and you really wanna get crafty and have a very like matching Halloween decor with your cauldron and your potion bottles and you know, your spell books, then by all means use this method for all three of those. It's really easy. It's fun to do with the kids or if you have like teens or preteens that like to craft. And again, it's somebody who like is really into crafting that takes on this particular like project because it's kind of involved but it like I said I think of crafting as like a therapeutic thing so I don't mind the time involved but like I said if you're looking for a quicker method by all means use the spray paint I will link it down below in the description box if I can find it thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are not already subscribed make sure you click that subscribe button down below and ding the bell if you want notifications every time I upload something new and also if you like this video give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends happy October you guys I'm so excited for Halloween so excited for November, so excited for Christmas. So I hope you guys are too, and I hope you guys are having an awesome month. Love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.